Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. We're going to be taking a look at DaVinci Resolve, which is an amazing application that allows you to edit videos. It's of the highest caliber, similar to programs like Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. It has a very extensive feature set, but the main benefit is that it's actually free. You can download it from Blackmagic Design's website. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. The free version has most of the tools that you'll need to put together just about any type of video edit. However, you can also unlock some advanced features in the paid version, which comes in at around three or $400, depending on where you are situated. So if you do want more advanced features, they're available, but this free version, which we're looking at today, is still gonna cut it for most people. So I'm gonna show you how to import your media assets, how to edit the footage on the timeline, creating cuts, applying transitions in between those cuts, how to edit audio, import audio soundtracks so that you can have a backing track and we'll also take a look at some text overlay and then following all that we'll go through and show you how to export your final video for upload to social media or for issuing a video file to your clients for use on any screen or media device so without any further delay let's go ahead and check out how to use davinci resolve Assuming that you downloaded the DaVinci Resolve app for Mac, Windows, or Linux, simply tap on the application icon to get started. Upon opening the application, the project manager page appears in the middle of the screen. You can use this to create and save projects. For those of you working on a large volume of client projects, you can create multiple databases where your projects are saved. For most of us, it's fine just to use the default local database that is created when you first install the app. You can create a new project by clicking on the new project icon at the bottom of this window or click on any existing project that may be in the project window. This will take you into the main interface. If at any time you wanna to return to the projects window, click on the home button on the bottom right hand corner. The main interface is divided into six different workspaces. You can navigate between these workspaces using the menu icons at the bottom. The first one is media, which is where you can import and manage all of your media files for your project, including video clips, audio clips, and graphics. The next one is cut, where you can concentrate on analyzing the contents of each of your media clips, preview them, create in and out points for each, and get them ready for use in the editing workspace. The next one is the editing workspace and that's where you put together your edit and make your final editing choices. You can layer video and audio, cut clips, apply transitions and add text overlay. Fusion is where you can add visual effects and animations. Color, the next one is where you can apply light and color effects to your video clips and Fairlight is for editing your audio tracks. And the last workspace is called Deliver, which is where you render and export your final video. In this beginner's tutorial, we're gonna delve into the media, edit, color, and deliver workspaces, which are the essential ones that you need to know in order to create your first movie. We'll touch upon Fusion and Fairlight, but I'll leave the full information on these for another more advanced tutorial. So now that we have the basic overview of the workspaces, let's get started and import some media into our project. To do so, go into the Media tab. You can add media by clicking on the hard drive icons in the File Manager on the left, using the File Import Media menu at the top, or simply by dragging media into the Media Pool window. If you get a pop-up window asking you to keep or match the frame rate of your footage, you can choose to have the project match the dimensions of your media and frame rate, or say no to this, and you can use the default project settings. Further to this, you can set the project settings, including resolution and frame rate, by clicking on the settings icon on the bottom right-hand corner. You can work in SD, which is 720p, Full HD at 1080p, and all the way up to 4K, 
which is 3840 by 2160 pixel resolution. You can change the resolution of the timeline and the video monitoring independently. So if your computer can't handle the higher resolution footage, you are previewing it at a lower dimension and bitrate. If you're experiencing performance issues, you can also change the media and cache files for better performance. Now that we've covered all that, let's get back into it. Click on the cut icon next. This takes you to the cut workspace, which will place all of your clips onto a timeline for you to preview. You can use the red marker along the timeline to scroll through all of your footage at once. You can also click on each individual clip in the media pool, preview your clip and add in and out points to prepare your footage for editing. Next up, we're going to enter the editing workspace by clicking on the third icon along. This is where the bulk of the editing takes place and where we're gonna spend most of the time in this tutorial. Drag a clip down on the timeline and you should see two windows side by side. If you don't, click on the Windows icon to the top right and toggle between single preview window and dual window view. Now you should have two windows, one on the left and one on the right. If they aren't already the same size, or if you can't see all the footage, click on the percentage drop-down icon on the left of each window and set them to the desired size. For my current monitor setup, being a 27-inch Retina display, I've set them both to 50%. Now we're gonna go in and start our main edit. Let's add some more clips to the timeline. This time, instead of dragging down a whole clip, I'm gonna make an editing decision before we drag the clip down to the timeline. Let's set an in and out point so that we're only using the part of the clip that we actually wanna use in our video edit. Select the mark in icon, then scroll along the clip to the right and set the out point. If you put your mouse over the video preview clip, you can drag the clip down and both the video and audio will be dragged onto the main timeline. If you just wanna use the video and not the audio, Click on the video icon that appears as you mouse over this window, or if you wanna just add audio, click on the audio icon and drag down. Go ahead and drag down all of the clips that you wanna use in your project and assemble them in the order that you want on your timeline. If you decide that you wanna make further cuts to the individual clips on the timeline, simply move the red playhead bar to the point where you wanna cut and use the razor tool in the menu bar above the timeline. Make sure you cut both the video and audio tracks at the same time, then use the select tool to select clips and delete as needed. Now let's go ahead and create a transition in between our clips. A transition is an effect that you can put in between two clips. To access transitions, click on the effects library tab on the top left. Click on the toolbox menu item and then select video transitions. There's a number of different styles of transitions available grouped together in categories, including dissolve, iris, motion, shape, wipe, and fusion transitions. Dissolves are the most common transition, which can create a smooth blend in between two clips. When it comes to applying the transition, you can simply drag it down onto the video clip on the timeline and your transition will be added. Now, sometimes you'll find that the transition won't actually apply in between a clip. It'll only allow you to place it to the left or to the right of that clip. If that's the case, put your mouse in between the two clips until you see a left and right bracket icon. Right click on that and add a cross dissolve. You can add a 6, 12, 24, or 48 frame cross dissolve, and this will give you a transition in between the two clips. And then you can go ahead and overwrite the cross dissolve with any other transition, and you'll get a nice even transition in between the two clips. So go ahead and drag these down in between your clips to preview them. For a more dynamic look, try some iris effects, motion, push and slide. Shapes can also be really interesting, so it's a matter of trial and error until you find the effect that suits your creative approach. Whilst we're here in the effects tab, let's now add some text overlay. Go to the toolbox menu and select the type of title you want and drag it 
onto the timeline directly above the video clip. The first section are standard titles with no animation applied. And the next section contains fusion titles, which have unique typography, graphics, color, and animations already applied to them. Once in the timeline, you can change the duration of the title by picking up the left and right handles and moving them until you cover the range of footage that you want the text overlay to appear over. Tap on the title clip and then use the text parameters box on the right hand side to enter your text. Some of them have two fields of text, a heading and a subheading as part of the animation effect. You can change the parameters of each, including text style, size and color. Now let's add some music as a backing track. You could go into the media tab and import it from there, but you don't have to. You can actually import your audio directly from the editing workspace and that applies to any additional media that you might want to add to the project. To do so, simply drag the audio file into the media pool window on the top left or use the file import media option on the top menu. To add an audio track into your project, drag it down onto the audio portion of the timeline. Audio tracks are colored green and video are set to blue by default. You can change the colors of these, but the default colors are blue for video and green for audio. Next, we want to adjust the volume of the audio track as we're using it as a backing track. We can do this in two ways. To the right of the timeline, you'll see an audio mixer, which has the channels of audio that are on your timeline. A1 is the audio track of the video that I downloaded onto the timeline earlier. And A2 is the music track that we just downloaded. So to adjust the level of the whole audio track so it becomes a backing track, use a slider and bring the levels down on audio track two. If you want to get more sophisticated about it, you can also create keyframes on the audio track and fade it up and down throughout the timeline composition. To do that, we have to change the timeline view options first. Click on the timeline view options icon top left of the timeline section. In the top section, select show audio waveforms. Then in the video view options, choose either thumb or film view. And now you can see the video preview on your video clips in blue and the audio waveform in the audio tracks along with a level adjustment bar. Now we're going to go in and create keyframes on the volume level adjustment so we can ramp the volume up and down throughout the composition. To do that, let's navigate to a point on the audio track where we want to start ramping the volume. Click on the audio track to make sure it's selected and hover on the horizontal line. If you're on a Mac, click on the option key and click your mouse at the same time. This will create a keyframe in red. If you're on a PC, use the Alt key and mouse together instead. Move the playhead to the next point and option click to create another keyframe and so on. Now you can click on those keyframes to move them up and down and adjust as necessary. You can adjust the smoothness of the keyframe in the keyframe submenu icon that appears on the audio clip. Next, we're going to apply some color correction to our video clips. To do this, let's click on the video clip we want to affect and go to the color workspace. There are an incredible amount of tools that we can choose from in this section. And the whole topic of color grading is really worthy of a dedicated video. So if I can, I might try and produce a dedicated video on that topic in the near future. For this introductory video though, Let's go ahead and make some basic level and color adjustments. To do this, we want to bring up the level and color wheels, which we can do by clicking on the third icon along. To adjust levels, use the slider under the color wheels, lift, gamma, gain, and offset. If you click on the three circles just to the right, you can access a bar form representation. And then the next one, which gives you access to shadows, midtone, highlight and offset. And again, you can adjust the levels of each. Once you have the levels right, you can then work on the color and manually adjust the tones in each of these tonal areas. To apply a white balance on your video, tap on the dropper tool on the bottom left hand corner of the color wheels section, tap on any white section in your video, and that will automatically white balance your video. Once you're happy with the color correction, return to the timeline and you should be able to see the changes 
applied to your video clip. If you want to apply these corrections to another clip on the timeline, select the clip that you just made the color correction for, click on copy, then click on the other clip that you want to copy the effects to, right click on it and select paste attributes. So that's it in terms of covering the basics in terms of DaVinci Resolve. You can get access to much more advanced effects in the Fusion and Audio workspaces. But as I mentioned, I'll leave that for another tutorial in the not too distant future. However, before we go, let's take a look at the final task and that is how to export your final edit. To do this, click on the deliver icon that kind of looks like a rocket on the menu at the base of the screen. You'll see a window on the top left corner where you can adjust your export parameters. The custom section allows you to create a custom export file. This includes creating a file name and location for where you want to store the video. You can render the timeline edit as a single video file, which is what most of us would want to do, but you can also select to render individual clips on the timeline out as independent video files. In the video tab, you can select your format, codec, resolution, and frame rate, as well as quality. There are so many options here that it may be best to take advantage of one of the presets, unless you're an advanced user and really know what you're doing or have a specific format that you need to author to. But as I said, for most of us, we should use one of the presets. For example, if we're going to be uploading to YouTube, you can click on the YouTube tab and this will give you the best file for uploading to YouTube. You could also select Vimeo, ProRes and H.264. And then once you've made your selection, click on the Add to Render Queue button just underneath the render settings. And then to the right hand side, click on Start Render to begin rendering your video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that tutorial useful. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like. And if you've got any comments or questions whatsoever, put them in the comments box below and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one. Bye for now.